Hello and welcome back to Paloma Valley. In the last episode, we finally bought a new tile. This has given us access to another part of the highway, so we now have a very compact interchange that leads down to Gilded Beach. And there's a very small community up here with what turned out to be a very large farming complex. I wanted this community up here to be a little bit more simple, like the farm. So I've gone with the European suburbia district style. And this is also where the new eco water treatment plants are. Off of this interchange is a very, very long road that goes all the way down to Gilded Beach. Gilded Beach now has a pedestrian zone next to the train station with loads of shopping mall commercial, a couple of beaches and some parks from the plazas and promenades pack. It was my first time working with a pedestrian zone and I think it's going okay so far. It's definitely helped to make this train station feel a lot bigger and it's going to get built on in today's episode. I also added some more houses to the residential bit behind the mall and of course the primary school had to set on fire just before filming this intro so it looks a little bit rough down here at the moment but that's just the way the game is sometimes. There's also a high school down here as well with some sports related parks and a few new blocks of these colourful houses. In today's episode I want to work more on Gilded Beach extending the pedestrian zone and adding some more tourist attractions and some more housing near the river. I also want to think a bit more about public transport, in particular trains. Because the districts are quite spread out now, I want to get a decent public transport network in to connect them all together. At the moment, there's no way of getting from Carlisle City to the new rural district via public transport, for example. So I'd like to put in some sort of central hub, a bit like the one that's above the park in Castlemead. But I want to make it a little bit bigger. Ideally, I want a train station that has multiple lines going out to all of the different districts within the city, however far away they might be. So it may involve having to remove some things or move some things about so I can get tracks in place. But it should help with a few of the traffic issues that we're having, especially the ones through the centre of Strawberry Flats, as most people seem to still be taking a car down to Gilded Beach. There's quite a lot of train lines already on this map, but there's only two entry points. And like I did in Calathea, I want to make sure that we're not putting too much pressure on these external lines because they're dealing with a lot of cargo trains and a load of tourists coming in. I haven't quite decided where I want to put this central hub yet, but I was thinking of buying this tile here so I could maybe put it on this piece of land that's currently completely empty and I can connect it to the existing train station in Castlemead. Or alternatively, I could have the main station on this island that's going to be a little bit more built up than the rest of Paloma Valley and then have all of the lines feeding off of there. Being on this piece of land here would allow me to get up to this part of the map a lot easier because I could potentially run the track along the river or the river bank and that would also make for some really great first person journeys. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do today is buy this tile here. Obviously the right hand side of this tile is just mountain, so we're not really going to be able to do much with that land there. I don't think the land down here is particularly flat, but it could make for a really interesting kind of mansion up in the hills vibe. So let's purchase this tile here. Having this piece of land available means that we can finally extend the residential area and strawberry flats. It's got a very harsh line at the moment because it was built right up to the edge of the tile, but we can expand it out a little bit further now. We can also give them a second access point off of this road here. We can continue the road down and put an intersection over here somewhere so that people can get into the city via two routes and we're not feeding all of the traffic down through Loga Heights because the traffic does get quite bad up here sometimes and you can see that there's a very long stream of cars waiting to get down here. So hopefully with a combination of a new interchange and a rail system, we should be able to cut this traffic down. Another thing we can do now is build the park area at the bottom of Strawberry Flats around this castle asset. This was already on the map and I think it would make a really good park or nature reserve much like the one on the island in Castlemead. It won't quite be as grand but it would be a good way to end this district and hopefully will draw a lot of tourists in. So because I'm not particularly feeling very great at the moment, I'm not going to push myself to do too much during this episode. So I probably won't actually get onto this piece of land until the next episode. And it'll take a few episodes to finish what I've got in mind. But it also gives me time to really think about the train layout and figure out the best place for the main station to go and where all of the tracks should be laid. So I'll probably do something very small on this piece of land at the very end of the episode, just to remind myself what to do in the next one. So I will be back over here later. But since we started this district in the last episode, I'm going to be building on Gilded Beach today. 
The commercial demand is quite high right now, so I think I'm going to do another couple blocks of the shopping malls and I'm going to sprinkle in some parks from the plazas and promenades pack. So it's just a very small extension to the pedestrian zone so far. I've added in a couple of new blocks of the shopping malls with a little plaza in the middle of each one. And I'm hoping for the right configuration of the shopping malls buildings by the time they're all upgraded because I really, really love how this restaurant asset kind of backs onto this plaza as does the mini parking lot that goes up the middle. But this one over here isn't doing so great. I may have to bulldoze them and possibly plop them in just so that it doesn't look too sparse on the back here. It's kind of frustrating how one side ended up being really nice and the other side isn't so great. But I'll come back and check it in a while once they're all finished upgrading because it might end up being okay. I've also added in a large plaza down here opposite the train station and a compact bus station behind it. It's kind of frustrating how the graphics on this intersection doesn't actually connect the two roads together but as you can see someone's just walked over it they are connected and it is a joined node but because it's a bus road i guess it would look really weird if it actually connected up to the path i just kind of wish that these sidewalk pieces could join up so it looks a little bit more continuous i'm going to be putting some bus routes through from this station and eventually these routes will go to other parts of this district and beyond because I do plan to build further north and further south in here. I reset the bus station a few times because I wasn't sure what colour to go for. I ended up picking green because I think it matches the train station somewhat. I did go back and bulldoze some of these buildings because they were actually already at level 5 and they zoned in in probably the worst configuration they could have done. Over here though, this long skinny piece in the middle here has just changed from a car park to a little outdoor seating area and it connects up so perfectly to this plaza. I really love the way that these three pieces connect back here and I just really hope I'm going to be able to do the same on this side because it looks shocking so far. So I'm not going to admit how many times I just bulldoze buildings so the right ones would zone in. But I managed to get it so that two of these long thin bench assets sit back to back against the back of this plaza and it looks a little bit nicer out here than it did. I was trying to get a four tile deep piece to be in here with a restaurant out the back but I just couldn't find the right sized asset. All of them had this really ugly dumpster and fence detailing on them and I thought this was probably the nicest that I'm going to get. So it's just one of these pieces with a shop either side and a restaurant in the middle and to be honest it looks a lot better than it did so I'm not that fussed. This building has just demolished itself because they're struggling for workers. So I think I might need to add some more housing in. I'm going to try to stick to these little colourful blocks but I probably won't be so rigid with it as we get down towards this way and I'll probably just zone it in all as regular housing to give it a bit more of a natural feel. So I'm going to see how many houses I can fit in along this space here. So there's a few more houses down here. I just did one more block of high density and one more block of low density before just going to the randomly zoned in suburbs. Obviously there's not that much space between the main road and the river and I was trying to be mindful about the potential of putting train tracks along this piece of land in the future. So I tried to leave a little bit of a gap between the houses and the riverbank. The housing demand is down pretty low now and the highest is actually industry. So I'm thinking I should put some industry over here so they're not having to travel so far to get to industrial jobs. But I'm not quite sure where I would put it. I'm thinking of putting a small amount of offices and nice looking industrial buildings behind the mall because I feel like it's kind of common to find that kind of warehouse, yard, 
behind these very big complexes. Obviously the goods need to get in somehow. So I think in the space between the high school and the mall, I'm going to fill that with a few office and industrial pieces. So this is why you don't try and work too fast and why you take notice of what you're clicking on before you click on it because I just dropped a water source on the back of the mall rather than painting it in with concrete. I've just flooded the entire district. Oh my god, let me get some pumps in and see if I can get rid of this water. Jesus, this is so bad. Oh my god, I hope it doesn't remove all of the houses that I just put in. I really need to slow down and think more about what I'm doing rather than just being on autopilot all the time. Oh my god, no. This is just a disaster. There's cars flowing everywhere. There is so much water. Oh my god. Like this is, oh my god, it's even got over to the pedestrian district. It's flooded the train station. Oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. Okay, it looks like it's mostly gone now and it's probably flown towards the river and it looks like none of the houses have removed themselves. Thank God I was not willing to go and redo all of those. And the pedestrian zone seems to be doing okay apart from the train station, which isn't surprising. It is a sunken train station. And this is the exact reason why I don't have natural disasters on because I couldn't cope with thought of something coming along and completely destroying my map after doing so much work on it. Oh, I'm so annoyed about that and it looks like there's a few pieces of water stuck over here so maybe I'll just bring this over for a bit and let that pump it up. Some of these buildings have completely destroyed themselves so let's get rid of that one and put it back in. I was doing so well. I was doing so well and then I just ruined everything. All because I wanted to paint a piece of concrete in. The mall is actually still somehow underwater. It looks like the water just isn't going anywhere. Oh my god, there's so much water around here. It's all just like kind of contained. There's probably loads underneath the mall and I just can't see it, but I'm going to move this around a little bit and see if I can suck up any of the remaining water that might be under here. I mean, it's not complaining about being underwater, so it can't be that bad. All right, I'm going to be watching what I do a lot more carefully now. I'm not just going to be haphazard about clicking things anymore. Although it's pretty much a guarantee that I'm going to do this again at some point. So I think this mall has to be the unluckiest mall in the world to have set on fire after just being placed down and then to have a massive flood that somehow gets trapped within the building grounds. So I'm sure there's going to be more natural disasters or self-imposed disasters that happen to this mall by the end of this series but for now there's a few industrial assets down the back here with a few offices and hopefully that will placate their demand for the moment. I'm going to add my first bus route in this district I don't want to put it all the way back up to the centre of Castlemead where most of the other bus routes run from because that's a long way for a bus to go plus there's already a bus that goes down to Loga Heights and that is going to be adding to the traffic. But I might make it loop around this square in the campus ground because there's no bus routes that go around there at the moment and then just come straight down this road all the way to the bus station down here. These two assets do overlap ever so slightly and I've tried to move them as much as I can to make sure they don't overlap. So the buses may drive through this plaza. I don't know exactly how bad it's going to be and I really don't want to have to move anything because everything is just the right shape and size at the moment. So if you see any buses going through the plaza, please just ignore them. I put a bus depot in over here so the buses aren't having to travel super far. So let's do the first stop on this first lane here. I guess it doesn't need another stop in this part of the district on the way out, but I will pull it up this road and put one stop outside the residential area in the high school and then bring it all the way up to here and put a stop somewhere on this square. Maybe I'll put one on the other side as well and then bring it back down this main road. 
So hopefully it should be sending some buses out. And then we need to pick a colour. And all the bus lines so far are fairly different, but we don't have anything in red yet, I don't think. Maybe let's go for a really deep, rich red for the opulence of this district. Something quite royal and regal. And let's just reduce the amount of vehicles. It's, oh my god, it's sending out nine vehicles. What on earth would make it think that nine vehicles is the right amount to send? That's insane. I really don't understand what controls how many vehicles it thinks 100% of the budget is because every time I place a line the number is completely different and it's probably to do with the distance travelling and how many stops there are or how many people live in the district. I don't know but I think that 9 was total overkill especially as they are the articulated buses with a 70 person capacity. Just a little bit too much in my opinion. The first bus is about to pull into the bus station, so let's see how badly it routes around it with the plaza right behind. Oh, one singular person got off the bus, okay. Oh, it kind of drives over the plaza and tail kicks that tree as it goes out, but it could be worse. I really don't want to have to move this station or make the road wider or anything, so I think I'm just going to pretend that that isn't happening. But I'm glad at least one person is using this bus. I'm sure it will get busier as time goes on and I guess they do already have a metro down here, but the fact the game thought it needed 9 buses is even funnier now knowing how few people are using it. This is so funny, this line doesn't make any sense at all. There's like no one waiting at any stop apart from this one right here outside the houses. There's like over 200 people waiting right here but no one waiting on the beach and only three people waiting in Strawberry Flats. I don't think I'm ever going to understand the public transport and the needs and the balancing of it because this just doesn't make any sense at all. So the last thing that I'm going to do in today's episode is I'm going to change these roads up a little bit. I'm considering changing these into the two-way highway so I can make the intersections a little bit smoother. And then I'm going to continue this road on a little bit further down this way so I can remind myself of the plan for the future. At the moment this is a six lane road and I don't believe that we have a two direction single road that's six lanes wide. The most that we have is a four lane national highway. I don't think any of the others are larger than that. We do have one with sound barriers and that might be useful because I have a feeling there's going to be houses built right up to the road in Strawberry Flats. Let's change these roads over, hopefully the traffic will also move a little bit faster. So I'm not happy with how this intersection is looking here, so I'm going to try a few things out to see if I can make it a little bit smoother and I'm not going to be using a pre-made intersection for this so it's probably not going to look that great but I'm going to give intersection building a go myself. This is a very simple highway interchange. The off-road goes along the same level and then the on-road goes underneath the bridge and then joins back up again. So let's press play and see if it works. So I've identified a problem with this already. Some of the cars coming off of this on-ramp are going right, which I don't want them to be doing. So let's fix that with the lane connector tool. So let's put this to that lane and this to that lane and hopefully that will stop any cars from turning right here. The traffic is backing up quite a little bit and I'm trying to figure out why that's happening. There seems to be a lot of traffic on this section of this road and it looks like this intersection is the main cause of that. This road hasn't really been causing me any problems recently. So I wonder if maybe the traffic lights aren't working or the lane connectors aren't done right. But let me sit here and watch it for a moment to see if I can figure out what's going on. After sitting and watching this for a minute, I think that it might be to do with this very short piece of road here. 
because this car won't be able to get onto this part of the road until the car in front of it has moved. I did think that that short piece of road there was going to cause me issues but unfortunately with the way that the tram depot is set up because the tracks only come out on one side and I didn't want the ugly side of this building against the road it had to sit really really close to this intersection and it's kind of frustrating that we only have one option to how this is orientated. But this seems to be flowing a little bit better than it was but I can see the traffic is still really bad down there. Oh my god, it's got worse. This is all because of this one crossing down here. Okay, I'm going to try one more thing to stop this from happening. And I'm actually going to stop them from being able to turn left here. So I'm going to do that as a straight on. So they have to now go over to there. And they can go over to there or there. Oh, this has all gone a bit weird for a moment. Uh, they're not quite sure what to do. Oh my god, it's just turned into chaos. The cars are just going whenever they feel like it. Those two roads shouldn't be going at the same time. Let me turn the traffic lights off and on again. Turn you off and then turn you on again. I think they all got in a bit of a muddle. Hopefully that's fixed it. Oh no, they are still going. Okay. For some reason, this road here doesn't have any lights at all. And they're just going whenever they feel like it. But they had lights before. I think I'm going to have to set up my own traffic light rules because this is not working in the way that it should. You know what though? Even though that was a little bit chaotic for a moment, this road is cleared. So maybe that was the right thing to do after all to stop them from going left at that junction. So I guess they were pausing every single time they were going through the crossing and that was then limiting the amount of cars that could go through every time the light was green. So now they just have to get through here and have the traffic lights come off of here or is this a free-for-all as well maybe because i changed that road there it took the time traffic lights off okay maybe just now i was looking at it at a moment where it was confused because these cars all seem to be moving normally now but this is still really really backed up i can't believe that just changing this road by a small amount has made the traffic go this bad i don't know whether maybe it's a coincidence that this has happened right now but hopefully, once I've got another interchange down here, these cars won't need to come down this way to get to Strawberry Flats. They can go off in this direction instead. So I'm going to continue this road down to remind myself to do that in the next episode. I'm aiming this towards this island. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to make the jump, but I'll be able to decide that once I've thought about this piece of land a little bit more. So I think I've changed my mind from earlier and I'm actually going to add this interchange in now and then I'm going to let it play through a little bit after I finish filming and give it some time to really balance itself out and then when we get to next week we can think about routing and attack it with a little bit more information than you'd have when you just put it in. So I'm going to go about here for the intersection. So obviously cars are going to be wanting to get to this part of the district from both directions eventually so I'm going to think about that now so I'm not having to bulldoze stuff in the future and then I can just build around it. I'm going to try and make the ramps go along this road and underneath it so that it's not taking up too much ground space and I'm also going to be very mindful about traffic crossing over itself so I'm going to make sure that the directions of the ramps coincide with the direction of travel on the road that it connects to. I haven't really done that much intersection building in this series so far, or even in Calathea, but it's something that I used to do in my builds quite a lot. And I'm quite proud of some of the intersections that I built, in particular the train intersections. I was very mindful of the different routes that the vehicles would be taking and making sure that they had the least amount of obstacles in their way, whether that be intersections or other vehicles. I'm hoping that I can do something similar here. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay a very simple road down here doesn't have to be very long but it's a little bit away from the highway so that we have room to put the off ramps in. Now in this road I have left hand traffic on so the cars will be going this way up the left side of the road and then onto the highway so I want to make sure that they're not having to cross over any traffic that's coming off of the highway. I'm going to put the slip roads onto the highway on this side and then the off ramps off of the highway on this side. This way you've got the least amount of conflict and the cars can pretty much be free flowing without having to stop for anything other than maybe to merge with traffic coming from the other direction. This probably won't look very good to start out with but I'm going to be doing a lot of adjustments with Move It and the Network Multi-Tool to make the ramps as smooth as possible.
Okay, here is my completed interchange. It's pretty much like the vanilla three-way intersection that you get, but somehow worse. But I made it, so I'm not going to beat myself up about it too much. I'm sure it will actually work once cars have reason to come down here. I am going to do a little bit of lane rules to make sure that the cars aren't coming up to the highway and then crossing over the direction of traffic. But other than that, hopefully it should all work smoothly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this up to Strawberry Flats and see if I can get some cars coming down here and I'll be able to see if there's any potential issues with this intersection and then I can fix them before the next episode before we start building anything. I've just done a very very simple temporary road up there for now obviously it's not going to look like that forever but I wanted to get a connection up here so cars will start routing this way and then we can spot any potential issues. Although, oh my god, I've just realised they can't come down here because the only way the traffic can come out of Carlisle Heights is down through Castlemead. Oh, I'm an idiot. I know I said that I wasn't feeling very great earlier, but I think that my brain may have actually turned to mush. So let's rectify that right now, shall we? We need a highway ramp that will bring them up onto this road. So I realised that this highway actually needed two additional lane connections. So what I had earlier with a six lane road would have actually been a lot cleaner and probably a lot more free flowing with intersections rather than all of these lanes going everywhere. And I did have to do a little bit of terrain adjustment. It's going to be tight under there with the trains coming in and there are some highway ramps that are very very close to the roads above them. Hopefully it's all going to be okay. And we can see some cars are starting to come from Strawberry Flats, which is not what I expected. Actually, I expected it to be the other way around. But either way, it seems to be working. So let's keep an eye on these two intersections, press play and see if it all works. It seems to be working so far. Everything's pretty free flowing. Obviously, the traffic's still a little bit backed up going into the center of Castle Mead. But a lot of those cars will have already chosen the route that they're going to go on and sometimes you need to let it play through for a bit for the cars to get to where they need to go and for new cars to route through the quickest route now that it's down. The number of cars that are stopped on this highway here is definitely decreasing over time. Obviously it's happening slowly but more cars are taking this route here which I'm very happy about because that's going to be cutting off that whole corner of going through local heights and then through this horrible intersection up here which probably shouldn't exist but it does seem to be really cutting down on traffic so far. Obviously it's never going to be perfect but we're doing our best. So I think that's where I'm going to end today's episode. I'm really excited to get stuck back into Strawberry Flats again and I hope that I can get onto that in the next episode. But like I mentioned at the beginning, I don't want to get too ahead of myself and since we just started Gilded Beach, I don't want to move on from it straight away because it's still nowhere near done. Obviously I'm going to do what they want me to do and try and meet all their demands. I'm going to have a real hard think about the train network before next week and I'm going to figure out what train station I'd like to use, where I want the routes to go and a little bit more about the future of Paloma Valley so that I can really set this network up to be able to handle the amount of people that we're going to have but also so that the routes are going in the right direction for where the districts are going to be. At the very beginning of this episode we added a little bit more of the shopping mall commercial to the pedestrian zone with a large plaza on the side and a bus station. The buses don't seem to be too popular so far 
but it's always the way that I'll leave it running in the background for ages thinking that no one's using it and then all of a sudden they'll be insanely busy and I'll need to up the capacity. I'm going to check in again with the buses at the beginning of next episode and see if we need to make any changes. I also added some more houses along the river in Gilded Beach. It goes right up to the roundabout that I put in in the last episode and kind of gets a little bit more sprawling as we go along. I've left a little bit of a gap along the riverfront because I'm considering running a train line down there so I didn't want to get too close and then have to bulldoze houses. I also added in a very small amount of industry and offices to the back of the shopping mall and flooded the entire thing by accident. I can't believe that I clicked on the wrong thing without even thinking and only afterwards realised what I'd done and by that point it was too late. Once you've placed a water source you just gotta wait for it to dry up. So the mall was temporarily completely underwater as was the rest of the district in fact actually. Um, the train station was just a big swimming pool because obviously it's underground. I didn't even check the metro station but I assume that was probably the same. And uh, there was a massive tsunami going down the roads of the residential neighbourhood and it was actually dragging the cars along and poor people were getting swept up with it so I do feel kind of bad but at the same time like none of the houses got destroyed, none of them bulldozed themselves and everyone's okay now so it wasn't really that bad. Nah, I don't think so. They're all right. Check back in with these new districts off camera and they're doing really well by themselves actually. They're very self-sufficient, which is great because they're so far away from everything else on this map. Obviously I've got a lot of room to expand this little neighborhood down here. So when I need to add some more housing and I'm not sure exactly what to do, I'll probably come back to this every now and then and just make it go further along this land here. I think these intersections have become my pride and joy in Palima Valley so far. I know a lot of people might think that they look ugly, but actually I've become really attached to them in the last few minutes of doing this outro because they're moving so smoothly and they're getting cars from one district to another without going through residential areas and driving up noise pollution and adding to the weight on the intersections. So in the future, I'll be able to build up around these on this piece of strawberry flats, and then eventually this highway will make its way down onto this island. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It was probably a little bit of a weird one, but I really enjoy doing things like intersections and routing and public transport. So I'm excited to get stuck back into things like that over the next few episodes. I'll be back next week with another episode, but until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.